what we're looking at today is taking a Hobie Tiger that is totally naked, no ropes on it at all, and we're gonna be fitting the downhaul and jib systems and takeaway systems for a clean and tidy trampoline. Yes, hello, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. We have been presented with a new to us Hobie Tiger, which really needs some ropes putting on it. This will be appropriate for any types of boat which have a powerful downhaul system and a fairly straight, hollow front beam. Starting off with this and finishing with this. So the first job that we're gonna do is to put some holes in the end cap of the beam here so that our takeaway lines can go through the beam, making a very tidy trampoline. This is what it's gonna look like when we're done. I've used two bung housings here. Now we're gonna take the bung housing and put it in, but before that, the bung housing is a lot deeper than it needs to be. So I'm actually going to cut this part of the bung housing in half. Okay, so there we are, we've cut that down. Okay, so those bad boys are riveted in. I've already drilled out the rivets which were holding the cap, so now we should just be able to pull the cap out and they're at it, ready for action. But we'll leave that off for now. So this is what we're looking for, is we're gonna put two blocks inside, one for the jib sheet taker one, one for the downhaul takeaway, um, and that's just tied in. It's a little bit of a fiddly job, so I've done one already to get a head start. We have to take the rope and go around this plastic fitting in the end. And I'm gonna go around twice. Okay, and then I'm going to tie that off using a reef knot. And there we are. We're going to thread the elastic for the takeaway. So what I'm going to do is using a tiller extension, I'm going to pass this all the way up the beam. This can be a little bit fiddly. For a tiger we've got five meters twenty of shock cord for each one. I'm just going to pass that through the block first and then I'm going to take both ends and I'm just going to tie both ends onto the tiller extension there so we can pull both through at the same time. But that is passed through the block first. It's always easier to put the elastic through by pulling it rather than pushing it. Um, okay, so there's both ends of the elastic come through. I just need to work out which side that knot, okay, here's that knot. Okay, so one end of this is going to go to the rope on this side. The other end of this will go to the rope on the other side. So for the rope that's gonna go on this side, I'm just gonna tie that off around the trampoline lacing there just to 
keep that in position. And then I'm putting this end through the block. And actually on this occasion, I am going to push it through because we're a bit limited for space on the other side because there's another boat part there. Okay, so there it is. I'm just going to take that off the stick. I'm gonna tie the elastic to the trampoline lacing so that is ready to go. So we need to do the same process for the, the forward elastic and then we can look at attaching the ropes. On most boats, we have got two holes in the bulkhead inside the beam there. So if you use one hole for one elastic and the other hole for the other elastic, that's gonna pre prevent the risk of getting tangled up inside there. I'm using nine meters of five mil Maffioli Swift cord for the downhaul. Starting off by going through the cleat on the mast. Then we're gonna take that up through this double block down to the block at the base of the mast. That'll bring us back up to the double. Through the central block at the base of the mast, down to the block at the base of the mast, up to the double, pull all that through. Then I can finish off at the cleat. So I'm gonna poke that one through pull a bit through, tie him back off. And then, being very careful not to drop it, because of course if we drop it, we've got to do it all again. All right, poking him out of the hole. Just gonna pop the cap into position very nice then just going to tie him off there all right lovely and then it's just how we're going to attach the shock cord to the rope uh, we could just tie a knot but um, that makes for a bit of a lump inside so instead what I'm going to do is take this two mil piece of rope nothing fancy Although she's a lovely colour, I'm taking a needle and then I'm just going to pass the needle through the rope. Of course, try not to skewer myself in the hand in the process as that might sting a bit. Okay, she's through and the knot has just stopped that from passing all the way through. So I'm just going to pass it through again. There we go. We could, of course, use a thinner line to go through here. There are many things that we could do differently, but here we just have to use what we've got to do what we can. Right, now take the needle off. I'm gonna put a knot in this end as well.
And there we've got a loop in the end of the rope, which is going to be nice for attaching the shock cord onto. The downhaul I'm going to put onto the further back elastic. So again, trying not to let go. Just going to put a knot in the end of the elastic. Again, there are many nicer ways that you could do this, but we have a lot of these to do. So, we're doing it this way. Okay, and then we can let go of that, and that is just gonna pull into the beam. So that's that side done. Now gonna repeat that for the other side. Okay, so with the takeaway all sorted out, just one thing left to do on the downhaul, and that is we're gonna attach the course adjustment lines. And what I like to do is fit these elastic pieces to hold it when it's not being used. So to attach these lines, I'm just gonna put a knot in the end. This is one meter of six mil the rope that we're using here is a fairly inexpensive one with a polyester core, but of course you could use a five mil with a Dyneema core if you prefer. Okay, so that one's gonna go through the sail and then down to the cleat. And then I'll just attach, using the same method, this small piece, this is a three mil elastic which just keeps it tidy. Of course, making sure that this is all gone inside the spanner bar. So then the elastic goes up and that's tied off with a clove hitch higher up on the diamond wire just to hold this bad boy up. Okay, so we're starting the jib system by attaching a small block onto this eye on the bowsprit. So for the jib system, we're using two separate lines. We're using a thinner line. Here I'm using a five mil rope with a Dyneema core. Um, this is gonna be three meters 10 long. This will be for the purchase. And then I'm using a slightly thicker rope. This is gonna be the rope, which is actually the jib sheet that you hold. This is six meters 70. This is a six mil. So starting with the thinner line, we're first going to attach it to the traveler car for the self tacking jib. So we could actually do this with some easy splice Dyneema and actually splice it on. But here we're doing all of our boats the same. So we're using this type of rope. And I'm just gonna tie this on here using a bowline. And then from there, We'll just make sure there's no kinks in the rope. And then that is gonna go through. We've got a block with a carabiner attached. That's gonna be the one that attaches onto the clue of the jib. So we'll pass it through there and then back down through the block. In fact, I'm just gonna hook that up there to make it a bit easier. Okay, 
and then she's going to come forwards through the block that we just put on the bow sprit and then the end we're just going to attach to another block which the main jib sheets are going to pass through I'm going to tie that on putting a knot in the end And then there we are. Okay, we've also attached a line with some blocks on it just to the top of the dolphin striker. This is one meter, four mil rope where we've attached a small block to each end. We'll see what happens with that shortly. Okay, so we're then taking our jib sheet rope, passing it through the cleat, through the first section of the self-tacking jib track and then through the small block that we just attached and then through the block that we attached to the 3 metre 10 line going underneath the other line and then we're going to do the same on the other side So we're then going to take each end of the jib sheet, attaching the small lines like we did for the downhaul. And then we can attach this to the shock cord in the same way. So I'm just going to finish off by using some self-tapping screws to hold the end caps on. I prefer to use screws than rivets here, just because from time to time, you might have to remove the end caps to service the takeaway system. Okay, so that's all done. I did actually trim some of the elastic off um, and I moved the knot down because it wasn't pulling quite enough on the jib sheet. So I've trimmed about a meter off. So the elastic for the jib sheets ended up just being four meters 20. Yeah, it just occurred to me that it's probably a good idea before you start trimming the elastic for the takeaway that you actually put the sails up and look at where those lines are going to be with the sails up because they might be slightly different to where you have them without the sails up before you start trimming. So there we go. I hope that's been helpful for you and will help you to tidy your boat up. If you're not yet subscribed to Joyrider TV, then do hit the subscribe button and I'll be back soon with some more on Joyrider TV.